Hello, this is Nigel Foster, and this pause for reflection is about the colour of water. You can find more of my resources at nigelkayaks.com and on the Nigel Foster YouTube channel. So, what is the colour of water? Pure water in a glass appears completely clear, but in reality it has a small amount of colour of its own. Pure water is very slightly blue. So water acts as a blue filter to daylight, absorbing other colours until there is only blue for us to see reflecting back. The longer wavelengths of red light are absorbed in the uppermost few feet of water. Deeper than that, any red object will appear black. The slightly shorter wavelengths of orange and yellow are the next to be absorbed, leaving green and blue till last. Blue penetrates deepest, so the remaining light that scatters back for us to see at the surface is blue. If you sink into the water, daylight appears bluer the deeper you go, until by about 500 feet down it's usually dark. At the surface of deep ocean water, when we look directly down, water can appear dark inky blue. But although the deep water blue that we see when we look down can look similar to the blue we see in the distance, sometimes the blue we see is the reflection from a blue sky. Coastal areas have more plankton, and that colours seawater green or brown. Here's an example of green on the eastern Pacific coast. It's often easiest to see the colour on a bright day when you're looking from shadow. Here is the greenish-brown that's more typical of the English Channel. Stirred sediments can make river water cloudy. Colour, yellow, brown, grey or red, depends on the soil type. Fast-flowing turbulent water can carry the most silt, so floodwaters with runoff from the surrounding land tend to show the most colour. You find suspended particles in coastal waters too, where waves stir up silt and fine sand. Given a few calm days, the sediments will settle out and the water becomes clear again. The milky appearance of the water here is caused by mineral particles, and from bubbles from an underwater volcanic vent. It looks like the milkiness caused by a kaolin, chalk, or by rock flour dissipating in a glacial lake. The effect here is localised. Farther from the vent we see the dark blue of the ocean current. Suspended particles make water cloudy, but floating particles can stop us seeing into it at all. Sometimes water is coated with a layer of yellow pollen, or in this case, green duckweed. The colour we see comes from what's on the surface. At other times, we see straight down through the clear water to the colour underneath, and it's the colour of the sand or the muddy bottom that we see that makes the water appear coloured. Dissolved chemicals, on the other hand, can stain water without making it cloudy. Tannins from decaying vegetation add an orange or reddish tint. The white sandy bottom in the shallows shows the change in colour with depth from yellow through red to brown and finally black. Unlike a suspension of particles that physically blocks and scatters light, a solution is translucent and the colour acts as a filter to absorb other wavelengths of light. Because a red filter absorbs other colours, red light itself doesn't have the energy to penetrate deep into water, daylight doesn't penetrate far into tannin-rich water. Deeper water appears black. Tannin-rich rivers like this one in Florida are often called blackwater rivers. The true water colour is only visible if reflections don't hide it. 
seen from a hilltop in Indonesia, looking down under a blue sky, the deep water appears blue, while the coral reefs show through the shallow water tinted with pale blue-green. This is the filter effect I spoke of. Water appears bluer and darker with depth. Although you see the colour of the coral and sand through the shallowest water as slightly blue-green, the drop-off edge shows dark blue-green dropping into dark blue. On an overcast day the scene looks quite different. Much of the vibrant colour has gone, replaced by the reflection of a cloudy sky. Beneath this cloudy sky, an otherwise blue sea appears slate grey. Colours appear to change with the weather, but are the underlying colours still there? Often the colour we see when we look at water is almost entirely reflection. Here in Seattle you see many colours of orange and blue and red and yellow reflected in the water. In contrast, the water is, if you look down into it, green with plankton, but when reflections hide the colour of the water underneath, they completely change the colours we see. The reflection of the hull of the ship, Coastal Venture, borders the reflection of the sky. Here and there you can see the reflection of small clouds too. The reflected details warp and shift with waves on the surface. There is little hint of what is beneath the surface from this angle. So we see the watercolour here as that of the reflection, even though we know the watercolour to be green with plankton. The interplay between actual watercolour and what is on top, in and beneath the water, plus the surface reflections, offers us a wide range of changing colours to see. For example, in the shallows we can find clean water that's almost clear, or very light blue, or blue-green. Deeper water appears darker blue. Sometimes there is colour from dissolved substances like tannin, or from plankton and other suspended particles. In shallows the colour of underwater objects shows through, but maybe there's something coloured covering the surface or the clear surface reflects the colour of what lies above or beyond. So what is the colour of water? I find it part of the magic of water that it can appear almost any colour. we see all the colours of the rainbow, and incidentally, rainbows are caused by light refracting through rainwater. But something else that fascinates me about water is how I can sometimes see it in its multiplicity of colour. There's the colour of the water itself, with or without dissolved or suspended particles modifying how I see the colour of the bottom as the depth changes, and there's the ever-changing patterns of reflection caused by surface ripples. There are patterns of light dancing across the bottom refracted through the lens of the surface waves. Watch a patch of clear water and you can see crazy and abstract patterns. I think water always deserves a second glance. This presentation on the colour of water was by me, Nigel Foster. You can tap into more of my resources at nigelkayaks.com or on the Nigel Foster YouTube channel. Nigel Kayaks. That's what he does.